Okay, so in the last video, we created a right triangle with the right angle on the left side. But in this video, we're going to create a right triangle with the right angle on the right side. So this is pretty much going to be a reflection of the left triangle. So this will be called a right triangle. So I'll run the script and show you guys the desired output. So this is a five road triangle and you'll see that it's a little different from the previous video. In the previous video, everything was aligned from the left side and in this video, it's a reflection. So everything is aligned on the right side. So I want you guys to try to play around and see if you can come up with the solution how to output this right triangle. Okay, so welcome back, and hopefully you guys were able to solve it. If not, don't worry, I will go through everything line by line or bit by bit so you guys get a clear understanding of how to output this triangle. So once again, before we look at the code, so let's try to think logically of how to tackle this problem and what exactly is different from the previous triangle. All right, so once again, I will open up the Python shell. All right. So I have the Python shell on the right and the command prompt on the left. So the change you want to notice as opposed to the left triangle is the space that precedes the asterisk. So in the left triangle, the asterisk was all the way on the left. But in this case, the first row has a bunch of space followed by the asterisk. Then in the second row, there is some more space or in this case, it's less than the first row, but there's still space, then the asterisks. Then you have the third row with some space, less than the second row, but there's still some space. And you'll notice the last row has absolutely no space and it's just all asterisks. So somehow we have to figure out a way to calculate the amount of space preceding the asterisk. And we also have to calculate the amount of asterisks. So calculating the amount of asterisks, we can pretty much use the trick we used in the last video. All right. So calculating the amount of space. So the first thing we'll look at is the amount of rows n. So in this case, n equals 5. Now let's try to calculate the amount of space for each row. So the first row has four empty spaces followed by the asterisk. The second row has three empty spaces followed by the asterisk. Now you'll notice that 4 plus 1 equals 5. So each row is actually dictated by the total amount of rows. So row 1 has 4 spaces plus 1 asterisk, which equals to 5. So 4 plus 1 equals 5. The second row is 3 spaces followed by 2 asterisk. So you'll see that n actually affects the amount of spaces. So if 4 plus 1 equals 5, with 5 being the total amount of rows, the first row will have n minus 1 spaces. The second row will have n minus 2. So you can see that n, the total amount of rows, and let's just call it k, the current row, determines the amount of spaces. So 5 is the total amount of rows, and say we're at the first row. So the total amount of spaces before we hit the asterisk is going to be 4. So if you look up here, you'll see we have 4 spaces followed by an asterisk. Now for the second row, you'll have n, which is the total amount of rows, minus 2, which is the second row. And that gives you the total amount of spaces for the second row, which is 3. Now you do that for the next one. Third row will have two spaces. The fourth row will have one space. And the fifth row, 5 minus 5, equals 0. So basically, spaces equals n minus k or i. We haven't defined i, but as we iterate through the for loop, we'll get an i for each iteration. Okay, so we've kind of handled the first part, which is determining the amount of spaces. So once we've determined the amount of spaces, what we can do is print the amount of spaces and then do the same iteration we did in the last video, which is printing out the asterisks for each row. So for row 1, we're going to have one asterisk. For row 2, we'll have two asterisks. For row 3, we'll have three. For row 4, 4, and 5. So the only change we needed to make was determining the amount of spaces. So now what I'm going to do is show you guys the solution. And let me just run this. So for some reason, my computer is slowing down. Not sure why, but so here's the solution. 
Now one strange thing you may have noticed is that the right side is not perfectly aligned or the right side does not form a perfectly straight line. Now this seems to be an idle problem. If we make a comparison with the command line version, the command line version forms a perfectly straight line and I'm not exactly sure why this is. Alright, so if you make a comparison you'll see that the right side of the command line version forms a perfectly straight line. As opposed to the idle version, the right line doesn't form a, a perfectly straight line. So it might be some sort of glitch or something with the idle that doesn't perfectly align everything. I'm not exactly sure. So let's just do another test. So I'm going to run this with 10 rows. Okay. So as you can see, it's not perfectly aligned. But now I'm going to run the same code via the command line. Now if you compare with the command line version, the right line seems to form a, a perfectly straight line. So we have a perfect right triangle here. In comparison with the idle version, the line seems slightly angled going outwards. So despite this discrepancy, this is the right algorithm. Okay. Now let's just take a look at the code. So like I said earlier, first we wanted to determine the amount of spaces. And the amount of spaces was determined by n minus i. So if you look at the code here, you'll see we're ranging from uh, 1 to n plus 1, which is what we did in the last video. But we also have a variable called start index, which is going to be n minus rho. All right, so once we have the amount of spaces, all we need to do is first print out the amount of spaces. So we use a print statement to print space. So here's a space times the start index. So the start index represents the amount of spaces. Now here's a little tidbit you need to be careful of. Usually when you print a statement, the default behavior of the print statement is to add a new line. So let me show you what I mean. So if I do something like print three, it's going to add a new line after printing three. So say I print, let's see, print 3, print 4, you'll see that 3 and 4 are printed on separate lines because that's the default behavior of 3 and 4. They're going to print a statement and at the end of the statement, they're going to add in a new line. Now you can change this default behavior by accessing the end parameter or argument. So if I do something like now, I'm not sure if this will work. Now, let's see how this works. Uh, so this should work, even though we're printing in the idle. Okay, so if you see the behavior here, I'm explicitly changing end to be nothing, as opposed to the default behavior, which is a new line. So here, after printing out three, instead of printing out a new line, you print out nothing at the end, and then you'll right away print out four, and after four, once again, since we've explicitly changed n to equal nothing, we're not going to print out a new line. So that's what we need to do because when we're printing out the empty spaces, we don't want to print out a new line. We want to continue and print out the asterisks. So if you go back and look at the code, you'll see print empty space asterisk star index. So we're printing out star index amount of spaces and the end is going to be nothing, just two single quotation marks. So by having the end to equal nothing, we're able to print out the amount of stars. And the amount of stars, once again, is equal to our row. So if you look at the next line for star in range row, so if it's the first row, we print out one star. If it's the second row, we print out two asterisks, etc. You'll see that we're printing out row amount of asterisks. Now this code is a little different from the previous code, which is probably a little better. So instead of in the previous version, we printed out the row multiplied by the asterisk. Now here we're actually iterating through row amount of times. So the code is a little different. So we print out row amount of stars. And then I want you to notice the last line, this last print statement. So the last print statement is an empty space. We don't really care about the empty space. We care about the end new line value. So what's happening is after we printed out the first row or the entire row, we want to be able to print a new line so we can get to the second row. So the first part is we want to print out 
a star index, empty spaces, and we want the ending to be nothing because after printing out the empty spaces, we still have to print out the asterisks. Then we iterate row amount of times. So if it's the first row, we iterate once. If it's the second row, we iterate twice and we print out that many stars. So if there's two iterations, we print out two stars. And you'll notice once again, the end is nothing because we want these stars to be connected on the same line. So after we're done with the iteration and we've completed the entire line, we want to print out a new line. So all we need to do is print an empty space, but you'll notice we're leaving end of the print statement to be the default value, which is a new line. So this empty print statement, we're actually more interested in the new line portion of the statement. And what that's going to do is send us to the next line. And after we're sent to the next line, once again, we do the iteration for row and range 1 to n plus 1. So we go through the next iteration, get the start index, print start index amount of spaces, then we print the stars, then we print a new line. And once again, we go through the next iteration. So all we really needed to change in this pattern in comparison to the left pyramid was the start index. We needed to figure out how many spaces we needed to print out. All right, so that's it with this video. Now in the next video, we're going to try to print out a regular triangle. So we've been printing out right triangles. So now we want to print out more of a equilateral triangle. And we're going to take the tricks we learned from this video and the previous video and sort of combine them to be able to solve the next puzzle. All right, so that's it for this video. I will see you guys in the next video.